Dragon Fighter is a game about dragons. And it's also really freaking hard! Developed by Natsume and published by I'm not even going to try to pronounce this company name, Dragon Fighter is among a league of games that for one reason or another completely bombed in the sales upon release, only to randomly gain a cult following compared to the size of people that say first in my comment section for no reason 20 years later. And while I wouldn't say that the game is worth that much because what is, I would say that it's definitely a treat for those out there collecting without any glimmer of hope of being considered a quote, filthy casual. Heck, the person that owned this game before me liked it so much that he ripped off the end label. Just look at that affection! Also, the title is a complete lie. In Dragon Fighter, there are a grand total of zero dragons to be fought. Although you do turn into a dragon by hitting the button combination of I have absolutely no bloody clue! The gameplay is kind of like a Shadowhand and Vice Project Doom made love with each other one night after getting really, really drunk. Look, they even have the same end label. You pretty much just kill everything, including what is truly the world's greatest fear, a homing snowflake, beat the boss, clear the level, rinse and repeat six times, and you win the game! Also, you don't have to jump in order to kill these guys, but I'm actually a world-class speedrunner. Don't you dare let anyone tell you otherwise. Much to the surprise of literally no one on planet Earth, this game is pretty ridiculous. Ridiculously tough. You only have three continues before the title screen greets you and belittles your existence as a human being, and of course it's not an NES game without packing the screen with about 100,000 enemies. Seriously, this is the first level of the game and it only gets worse. And this is where the game becomes a lot less about fighting and a lot more about dragon-ing, because morphing into the dragon is pretty much how you win this game. In order to turn into the aforementioned Dramerkins, you gotta fill out this bar until it starts giving you a seizure, which is obviously done by murdering all the woodland creatures and snowflakes, and then it's a shooter! Because I haven't talked about enough of those yet! There's also a level up system in this game, which is done by collecting these things that I have no idea what are. Level 1 allowing you to shoot lasers out of your eyes, level 2 allowing you to breathe fire, and level 3 allowing you to, ironically, still breathe fire! But this time it's homing! FINALLY I CAN SHOW THOSE SNOWFLAKES WHO'S BOSS! Pretty much all of them are on the same level of sucking. Level 2 is seriously useful, like, once in the entire game. The level design of Dragon Fighter is pretty hit and miss. GET IT?! You have stages like 1 and 3 that are pretty good, albeit ridiculously difficult, but the rest of them get pretty annoying pretty quickly. For example, do you like ducking? If not, then there's a good chance you'll hate about 80% of level 2. And the bosses are just on a whole new level of annoying most of the time. As in, it's one of those games that legitimately requires you being powered up to eliminate a good chunk of them, and even then they take like five minutes to kill. Thankfully, if you're a wuss like me, you probably have one of these laying around. It seems like with many later NES releases, a trend came along in which the developers cared a lot less about legitimately good, innovative gameplay mechanics and just said, well, I'm all out of fresh ideas, I'm pretty used to programming things now, and I got plenty of money. Let's just push the system to its absolute limit and see if the nice graphics and music can dazzle the critics away. And while it's true what they say, aesthetics don't necessarily make a great game, I do think that it goes a long way, provided that game is in Treasure Master. The graphics and music in this game are fantastic, and there's absolutely no denying that someone really put in their all to make this game look and sound pretty, but again, that's also at the loss of us seeing really anything new. There is that one mechanic where you can, like, morph into a dragon or whatever, but beyond that, let's just say that the game is not brimming with creative ideas, and that you could probably pass this game up and it wouldn't give you freaking PTSD. There is very little to offer here gameplay-wise that you can't get with a much better game, or cheaper purchase for that matter, but, like I said, that's not really the reason why anyone plays this game. It's because of that darn price tag. At this point, Dragon Fighter has become a huge collector's item in the NES scene, and currently sells for upwards of $140. And, while I do think that this is an excellent game, there is nowhere near enough unique and interesting material here to make it even worth half of that. If this was 2008 and it was still worth, like, $20, then I'd give this game a huge recommendation, no question. But, as it stands in 2016, there are much better ways to spend your money! Like I said, the game holds a fairly good resemblance to much more common games like Shatterhand, and even if you're going for rarity, get a game like Fire and Ice or Swordmaster. If you must spend $100 on a 25 plus year old video game, then those are the ones to go after. Dragon Fighter is definitely good, but it's not that good. But, like I said, if you're getting to that point in collecting, you're gonna get this game anyways.